not really a lot left to say. Welcome to another post-game episode of Lombardi Time Brews. I am your host, John Delray. Uh, yeah, well, that, yeah, it was a football game. It qualifies. Barely, but it does qualify. Packers at Commanders as the Packers fall in Washington 23-21. Packers slipping all the way down to 3-4 and four in their record. And pff, there is just not much about this team that we know right now realistically we know that right now they're not a great football team we know that in the post-game press conferences Matt LaFleur is going to be horribly cliched and predictable we know that they didn't run the ball enough we know that the defense started out aggressive and then pulled back there you have it. What we really don't know is really a lot of the core problems of the team. And, and probably the most damning part is that I'm not sure the Packers even know what questions to ask to get them to answers right now. I mean, I'm, there really isn't an excuse for this offense to be as broken as it is. One thing we can say is that the offensive line reshuffling worked. I mean, Washington got some pressure. They were always going to with that front. But the, the reshuffling seemed to work well, which means they better keep it moving forward. And when Bakhtiari returns to having that knee at 100%, because obviously we're hoping that this isn't a, a setback of any type, who knows exactly. Um, I'd be hard-pressed to believe that this is a long-term thing since Bakhtiari did some pregame stuff and it was questionable, not out, and... You know, I, I'm glad to see that they stuck with the reshuffling, even with Bakhtiari out, and they just put in Zach Tom at left tackle. I think that this is the way you move forward for the sake of that offensive line. But beyond that, why? Why do they get away from the run so easily? 12 combined carries for Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Flip it over to the other side where they got their backup quarterback playing, and Robeson and Antonio Gibson get a combined 30 carries. You know, and I just finished watching the postgame pressers of Lafleur and Rodgers, and both of them said in their postgame presser that Washington played a lot of too high safety shell. What's the best way to counteract against too high safety shell? Well, run the ball. Yeah. And let's talk about the, the fourth and one play. Stop making football hard. You decided to run an out to your rookie. Now, admittedly, the play call wasn't awful. If Sammy Watkins blocks, they probably do pick it up. But still, a pass play, even a quick pass, has elements of risk to it. Dobbs didn't hang on to the ball, as a for instance. Sammy Watkins messing up what he was supposed to do, running basically a, a straight go instead of blocking, which he was supposed to block. Or you just come out in I form, put Aaron Rodgers under center, put A.J. Dillon at the traditional fullback spot, Aaron Jones at the traditional halfback spot, and call halfback dive. <laughs> <laughs> the Madden staple that's been around for years. Try calling that one. You need one yard. You have A.J. Dillon, who has not been playing up to his standard or the standard that he set at the end of last year, but he can get you a yard. And instead, you, you throw a quick out to Dobbs, and I just, I don't get it, I just, I, I don't, 
you know, I, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. I, my belief is that they're involved in this, this super intense chess game. Right? Where Lafleur is always trying to be unpredictable, that they're trying to mask, that they're trying to... It doesn't have to be that hard. Right? It's like you're so focused on doing the unpredictable that that's what's gotten predictable. And yet, speaking of unpredictability, just another little thing. When you saw Washington's offense really struggle, they did something very unorthodox. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I do know that it was a gadget play that sparked some life and got their offense moving. We just seem to believe, the Green Bay Packers seem to believe that we're just above that kind of thing. Well, you're not. You're not. Your offense is broken. Right now, you're not above anything. You're certainly not above calling a halfback dive on fourth and one. And Rodgers. You know, I have two points with Rodgers. One is on the field, one is off the field. And on the field, what are some of those throws? I mean, first of all, you're either throwing it three yards behind the line of scrimmage or it's going 30 yards downfield. There is no in-between. There is no short, no intermediate game. It's all the extremes. Why? Rodgers wants more West Coast elements. Okay, well, that, that, you know, that involves a lot of passing beyond the line of scrimmage. And Lafleur's scheme dictates it as well. So what the hell are we doing either going behind the line of scrimmage or 20, 30 yards downfield? There's a whole middle area that can be worked with that we just don't want to acknowledge exists. And, you know, too, we see this every week. Rodgers only seems at this point in his career at 38 years old that he's only going to make, like, these, these ridiculous, awesome, great throws when the urgency is at the highest. Right? Like, I mean, we watch him for the, the second and third quarter miss... Just miss. And maybe they go down as completions, but it's not where the ball should be coming from a four-time MVP quarterback to his wide receivers. He just he misses. And then all of a sudden, fourth quarter, we need a game-winning drive. We need something, right? And he pulls out this miraculous, beautiful throw. In terms of off the field, what I'm growing really tired of is in Aaron Rodgers' press conference, he talks about we. We need to play better. We need to execute. Okay, And I'm not pretending that the rest of the team doesn't have flaws. There's issues in wide receiver. No doubt about it. I don't mind them adding a wide receiver at all, but I don't think it's the quick fix other people do I think it is, and I, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But ultimately, I'm growing very weary of this team spokesman type deal where he comes out and says, we did not play well enough. You know, we had a good week of practice. We need it. No, dude. Right now, your numbers say that you're not even really an average quarterback in the National Football League. Which means you need to be standing up there and saying, I am not above this mess. As quarterback of this team, it all starts with me. And I need to play better. It's just that easy. You know, in terms of the wide receiver thing, yeah, I support adding a wide receiver. Of course, reasonable. You're not shipping away 10 first-round picks for one, but I do support adding a wide receiver. They could use it, no doubt about it. But it's not this quick fix either. There's a lot more issues here than just getting a wide receiver. Look, we saw Taylor Heineke run a more competent offense today than Aaron Rodgers did. Okay, yeah, he has Terry McLaurin, he has 
Curtis Samuel. But his running backs are not equal to Green Bay's running backs. Tunyon is a better tight end. Okay, or how about we look at the the Giants game for weeks when um, when Daniel Jones was leading the charge with all backup receivers. It's just it's not it's not an excuse. There are plenty in the NFL right now of offenses that don't have superstar wide receivers that are still putting together a competent offense. That can move the ball. I'm not asking you to be the 30-point-a-game number one in the NFL offense you were. But the fact that we're this far into a year without Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones has less touches than he did at this point this year is a travesty. It's just bad planning. And... The wide receivers you have should have been able to at least form a competent offense. But what we've seen is this drop from one of the league's best to one of the league's worst. When it should have been one of the league's best to middle of the pack. You know. I don't know. The offense needs to be run through Aaron Jones. There is no doubt about that. And yet, 12 combined carries for Jones and Dylan today. And Matt LaFleur in his press conference is going to say all of the cliche things. He already did it. He said, we need to coach better. We need to play better. We need to execute better. Yeah, we know. Uh, We need to get more touches. Yeah, we know. It's a part of the human condition that you lose credibility, Matt. You say these things week in, week out. Nothing ever changes. Yeah, one of the big knocks on Mike McCarthy towards the end of his tenure was the message has grown stale. It's been a way shorter period of time. But at least to the fans, I think I can say for a lot of people, Lafleur's message has gotten stale. Because you lose credibility when you say the same thing over and over and over again. You want Aaron Jones to get more touches, hand him the ball. Make a play call that hands him the ball. That's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Defensively, I will say, this team came out hot. I mean, Razul Douglas is flying all over the field. Jair Alexander is being aggressive. Devondre Campbell, at least in the first half of the game, played like an all-pro. He had the pick six, but beyond that, he was making plays. He was playing like last year's Devondre Campbell, and he deserves credit for that. The defense was being aggressive. We were seeing Quay Walker blitz. We were seeing Devondre Campbell in on pass rush. All of the things that we called for the defense to do, and they did it. And they had so many turnover-worthy plays, and they even forced a couple. But here's the problem. The defense looked fundamentally different when they lost that touchdown after the penalty. I mean, I'm talking about the one where Gary got the strip sack, uh, Razul picked up the fumble, and it was going to be a return for a touchdown, and instead it was called back because of a ticky-tack foul on Eric Stokes away from the action. And then you had the dropped Jair interception, which led to the Amari Rogers uh, punt fumble. Again, again, here you go. Three plays that the Packers can't fight back from because they got punched in the mouth, something didn't go their way, something broke, they faced some adversity, and now we're done. We done. But the defense started out well. Like the defense that we know that they can be. And then it faded. If you're going to be a defensive team that that the defense carries the team, they can't get gassed in the fourth quarter of a game. And again, kind of what happened. So, I don't know. A lot we don't know about this team. A lot we do know about this team. And unfortunately, what we do know, it ain't great. But Packers 3-4. and four. Heading to Buffalo next week. They are opening uh, as nine and a half point underdogs. 
was the last time you saw the Packers be damn near a, a double-digit underdog. Eesh. But three and four, brace yourselves for three and five. I will support this team until the end of time. But just looking at this logically, eh, Buffalo's real good. And maybe Green Bay shows up and plays to the level of their opponent, as we've seen Green Bay do for years. But if they put the product on the field like they did today, oh boy, it's going to be ugly. So they're three and four right now. Brace yourselves for three and five. Luckily, a lot of teams in the NFC are very, very middling. Packers have not completely fallen out of this thing yet. But three and four, we'll see if they go to three and five or if they're four and four. Whatever. After the Buffalo game, we're going to see just how big of a hole this team has to dig themselves out of. But thanks for joining me today on Lombardi Time Brews. I will be back tomorrow. I'm going to rewatch this game in the morning. I'm going to have more thoughts, you know, let this simmer a little bit. But I will be back tomorrow afternoon uh, with further thoughts on the Commander Packer game. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, as always, I hope you are having a great day. Go have a better day than what we just witnessed. And always, 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 go Pack Go.